For the last few months, I've been playing around with single board computers and eGPU setups. And one of the biggest problems that I always run into is storage and boot media. But I have a solution, and here it is. Hey everyone, this is Project SBC, and today I'll show you how I turned an external USB SSD into my Windows boot drive. I'll also go over a bit of the background as well as some boot up times and performance tests. I've got quite a few x86 single board computers that I like to run Windows on. Something they all have in common is USB 3.0. So I thought, is it possible to install Windows on a USB drive? USB 3.0 speeds aren't too far off from SATA 3 speeds. So running Windows may not feel any different than it would on a SATA drive. Many computers nowadays have support for USB boot. In fact, many Linux distributions are designed for portable media and are lightweight. But Windows is not a lightweight OS. So the answer to my question earlier is yes, but it's not quite that simple. First off, Windows by default will not accept USB devices as boot drives. You'll get an error if you try to follow the standard installation process. There was a version of Windows developed for USB devices called Windows 2 Go, but it was limited to Enterprise Editions and Select Certified Hardware. Not necessarily everyday consumer friendly. That's where Haslio's win to usb comes in. This software allows you to install your own Windows installation onto a USB device. But there's a catch. The free version only lets you install the latest Windows Home Edition unless you'd like to pay $30 for the full version, in which case you can get access to the full suite. The last consideration is the USB device. You'll either need an external SSD or hard drive or a USB thumb drive capable of sustaining 100 plus megabytes per second. Otherwise, Windows will fail to finish installing. Before we get started, you should check to make sure your computer will boot from a USB port. So here I have an NVMe to USB 3.0 adapter and a 256 gigabyte XPG NVMe SSD. But you don't have to use an NVMe drive. There are also 2.5 inch SATA 3 or M.2 SATA solutions that will work just as well. Before you go plugging in your drive to the USB adapter, you will need to format the drive with the file system like NTFS. Otherwise, the USB adapter may not recognize the drive. I'm using a PCIe based drive, so I'm going to use the PCIe lanes on my M.2 E key to format it. Next, I'm going to install my SSD into the adapter. This SSK adapter does a great job of using the aluminum case as a heat sink, as you can see from the thermal pad I install here. Once that's done, it's time to install Haslio Win to USB and get your Windows installation media ready. I'm using the free version of the software, so I can only install the latest Windows 10 Home Edition version. The software supports many different installation media like ISO, EDS, and of course CDs. Once installation starts, it'll take about 10 minutes or more depending on your device. Once it finishes, restart your computer and head to the BIOS. Set your adapter as the first boot device. Windows will continue the installation like normal at this point, just wait for it to finish. Here we have all four of my Latte Panda boards booting from an external SSD. The newer generation all took around 19 seconds to get to the Windows login screen. The first generation Latte Panda did take a little bit longer, but that's to be expected with an Intel Atom processor. Here we have Crystal Disk Mark scores for Latte Panda Alpha and the first gen Latte Panda external SSD versus eMMC. You'll see on the high Q depth sequentials we are getting over triple the performance of the eMMC and that's particularly great for the first gen Latte Panda because it does not have a SATA or M.2 slot. And there you have it, my single board computer boot media solution. There's a couple of scenarios where this really does help out. The first is eGPU setups on the newer Latte Panda boards. You do want solid state drive performance when you're using it, and it's hard to get that when you have your M key occupied by an eGPU adapter. Now, I do have an E key adapter for NVMe drives, but I don't find it's 100% reliable in the long run. The external SSD fills that slot nicely. 
On the first gen Latte Panda, you're limited in storage options, and the external SSD will beat the EMMC by threefold and some benchmarks. So you're definitely going to get a performance boost there. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button, maybe subscribe, and thank you for watching.